perfection on you. Um, I know that you're, you know, you're an amazing cruelty free vegan interior designer, but what attracted me to you and I'm, why I'm so grateful to be working for you is because finding the right pieces that have the intersect between the three things I care about, which is um, cruelty free, um, sustainability and healthy. So non-toxic, like what are the, finding that intersect is really challenging. And when I initially bought this home, I asked my audience, like, who knows this stuff? I was like, do you, do any of you know any, you know, brands, CB2, West Elm, any, any of Pottery Barn who either has a non-toxic vegan line or like, any, who can I trust out there? And every response was, um, if you find one, let us know. And so while I still think the market is incredibly void of what we need um you entered my life and you have taught me already so much about um what the importance of having a compassionate home and it obviously very much aligns with me as i want to mm -hmm. start a family in this house as well as place my head on a bed at night that gives off an energy that i want to receive so tell us a little bit about how how you you came to be in the space okay first of all what a great intro and you really hit upon all the points that that is everything what our ethos is here about what i do so thank you um so i became i've been a designer really uh, for almost 20 years a very very long time based in miami but do projects everywhere and um, my family and i really have always loved animals we've just I mean, Luca's right here beneath me. And of course, I have his little collar on so he doesn't bark, hopefully. But we've always loved animals. And they've been an integral part of our life. And um, I'm involved with PETA. I'm on the board of Farm Sanctuary. I mean, our life really is surrounded by animal welfare. And um, a couple of years ago, I guess I was ready. I always say you have to be ready for change. And it can't, you can't push it on anyone and you have to allow people to come to their own decision, just provide with them with the correct information and let them gently, you can gently persuade people. But I saw a video on dog leather and dog leather exists. And um, do you see my face? I didn't even know that. I'm like, what yes, is, what is yes, dog? Yes. And that oh. is actually what propelled me to make change. And um, China is the leading exporter of leather. And leather can be anything. It can be kangaroo, K leather, as I believe uh, Nike or Adidas just got busted for that. Um, seals, um, anything, dogs, raccoon dogs, cats. And so the leather that you're purchasing not necessarily might even be a cow, which when now that I know so much more, I'm like even a cow is terrible because their life is so horrible. And the, it's, just, it's just despicable what we humans are capable of. And so when I learned of dog leather, I was so aghast and it just, it changed me. And it was really a turning point in my life and a very positive turning point. And so I declared that I was no longer going to use anything made with animals, nothing animal based. And what happened was I just entered this huge rabbit hole because initially I just did it for animal welfare rights because I love animals, but I learned it was about health and wellness and labor suffering and the environment and that we're destroying the planet. I mean, the textile industry is one of the most toxic industries globally. Um, the average fabric is 30% chemicals. There's over 8,000 chemicals approved that most of them haven't even been tested for fabrics. So we are killing the planet, we're killing ourselves, we're killing all living beings. Right, so and just so everyone also knows, like what we put on our skin, clothing, fabric also comes into our, into our body. Um, and, and our skin is, is our largest, largest organ. So, and of course the things we're sleeping on and, and the, and the, the chemicals they're giving off. I mean, we need to think, we need to not go crazy, but we need to think about this. We need to be exactly. cautious. Exactly, because I think people don't realize that when you buy something, it has, especially if you buy an animal-based product, you know, a lot of products, so let's just, but we can just focus on animal-based because to me, they're also the most toxic. So when you buy an animal-based product, think about it. It was a skin, it was once on a living being. So now it's no longer on that person. So how do you protect that hide or that skin from rotting? Think about a scab, you get a cut, you get a scab, it falls off and it's like this yucky looking gross thing. So think about that with a, any kind of hide, leather, fur, down, wool, anything. 
So it has to be laden, laden with toxins and chemicals and poisons in order to preserve that fabric or that material. You then, as you say, put it on your body. Well, the, the chemicals don't just vanish by magic, they stay there. And they soak into our skin because our skin is porous and like a sponge. So it just is this terrible cycle and we're exposing our families, our children, we're in our cribs, in our, in our sheets, everywhere with terrible chemicals and terrible energy. And just because this is the, you know, for a lot of people, this is the first time they're hearing it and mm -hmm. the fear can be overwhelming. Um, where you kind of came in for me is you have a very non-judgmental approach and you recognize, I feel that you recognize, correct me if I'm wrong, that um, perfectionism isn't the goal. Consciousness mm -hmm. is, um, but also, when it comes to sustainability, the number, the first thing you told me when on our first virtual meeting, we're doing this virtually, guys, it, um, I'm trying to not say guys, we're doing this virtually, <laughs> everyone, um, is that like not to throw out things that I already have, because there's again that, that sect with sustainability. So now I'm getting, you know, what can we repurpose? We also don't want to get rid of everything that, that we have and, and waste. So figuring out this intersect is super important. Yes, it's very important. And also, I always say, I like to believe that most of us are just doing the best we can. And that's all we can do, right? We can only do none of us. There's no such thing as perfection. And as far as items that you already have in your home, yes, you never want to just get rid of them because you want to recycle them and use them because that's also harming the environment if you just throw things out. And it's a learning curve and it's a process. It's a process and you do the best you can and you do what works for you. It has to work for you. So again, no one is judging you. I'm just here, I have the information, I have the knowledge. And right. whatever you wanna take from it, you do, and whatever doesn't work for me, you don't take. And I think just like you said with anything, there are stages um, in, your, in your book, Vegan Interiors, which I like to, I bring it in the sauna with me, I like to read it <laughs> and just Good. learn a little bit. Um, it, it's like, it just every time I read something, you know, in, in, in this page, just for example, you, you just take a beautiful pic, you share a beautiful picture of the room that I believe you designed. And you just said going ethical in a similar space could save the suffering of at least 150 alligators, 10 sheep, 24 foxes and 60 geese. And what I love about this is it's not graphic as sometimes kind of PETA can be, which is very polarizing. Yeah. But we're just talking about saving a life and what you can do just by choosing um, a, a, a to be more conscious in your textiles. Yes, exactly. Because my, my approach for this was always, as I said in the beginning, um, I want to present the information and allow you to make your decision. Because I feel my job is to teach you while designing your space and enlighten you and allow you to make the decisions. I will, I'm a big proponent clearly of keeping a home as toxin free as possible because it's healthier and you're saving the planet and you're saving animals and you're saving yourself. I mean, over 50% of Americans have a chronic illness, diabetes, infertility, autism, um, cancers, uh, respiratory illnesses. The numbers are just ADHD. The numbers are just growing and growing and growing. And a lot of that has to do with our environment and what we're exposing ourselves to. But prior to 1960s, homes were much healthier than they are today. Because today homes and spaces and offices are being built very quickly. So they're using materials that are highly toxic. Mm. And we're in our home, especially now with COVID. I mean, most of us are home. So we're surrounding ourselves with all these chemicals more than ever. Good point. So, the mm -hmm. chemicals, the energy, you know, creating a home, building a home, decorating a home, whatever you want to call it. This, the home is no longer just the home. It's also your vacation spot. You know, it's also <laughs> your, your office for a lot of people. So um, making conscious choices to raise the vibration and, you know, put good vibes for your health, for your well-being, for all of that is, it's important to me. So that's where kind of you, where you come in. And what I love also about your approach is it's not just what you've said so far. It's also sensory. We're talking, you know, in building my bedroom right now, we're talking about textures and scents and different colors to promote a healthy environment. I mean, I'm very sensory sensitive and I have been my whole life yet. 
I never realized what that does to my nervous system. I mean, as early as being in kindergarten, I didn't like the way my socks felt on my feet. Um, and kind of just that was chalked up to being a um, kind of difficult child, I guess. <laughs> but as I'm getting older, fabrics, textures, what I'm seeing with my eyes, what I'm hearing, what I'm smelling, all contribute to me feeling safe. And that is what is super important because without the safety, I can't show up as me. So I know this is about vegan interiors, but it kind of, and, and cruelty free and National um, Farm Animal Day and what we could learn. But just to kind of go a little bit macro for a second, this is about true wellness in your home and your body and taking the best care of you so that you can go out and take the best care of the world. Yes. And you know, you said something interesting. You said, although it's about vegan interiors, it's really, it's all connected. In order to have a positive, nurturing, sensory environment, then ideally it should be cruelty free. So they kind of go hand in hand, they're a marriage. So if I'm creating a sensory space for you or for a child with autism, well, I would never consider animal-based materials because that doesn't work for a sensory space because mm -hmm. of the smell. smell of Even if you're not in to animals or animal rights or the planet even, it's more about finding the right match for what your needs are. And a sensory environment is ideal. And we're all sensory. You're a little hypersensitive perhaps than the average person. But when we design spaces for people with challenges, all the things that we're thinking about in designing that space, I think about designing a space for you or for an elderly couple or for a single guy. It's all the same. We're all sensory beings. And the, ideally, you want to create an environment that brings out the best in you. Right, it's all about optimal environments. We all have our own. We all have our own fingerprint, our own thumbprint. So cookie cutter design doesn't really work because your needs are different than my sensory needs, and yes. you know. And it's about what works for you and the energy. You know, you might be someone who doesn't hang out in bed. Like I asked you and Evan a ton of questions. Some people live in their bedroom. So the way I design that space is going to be very different than if you guys just go there to sleep and read a little bit. You know, it's about meeting the, the optimal needs. And before we dive into some of the more specific questions, um, I think that it's a very easy space to kind of want to give up on because uh, I know in the pursuit of wanting to create more cruelty-free uh, choices, so going, you know, more vegan when it comes to interiors, I learned that that increases the, sometimes. That means that they'll swap the traditionally animal-derived textile for a uh, microplastic leather, let's say. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm no longer sustainable or uh, considering the chemicals. And it, so it kind of makes you want to give up if you don't have professional help. And to that same token, like you're like, okay, well, if I just spend more money, I'll be good. That's not the case either. So navigating this terrain is hard. And that's where you as the expert, I feel like, kind of come in with the ability to provide consulting for clients and kind of navigate what is a very confusing road right now. So for somebody who may not have your services or what kind of, mm -hmm. what kind of information can you tell us is the most toxic and commonly used from farm derived products? Mm -hmm. So what fabrics should we be on the lookout for? Okay. Leather, clearly, because there's a lot of leather products out there. Leather, again, has over 250 chemicals. You're talking formaldehyde, arsenic, lead, um, chromium. Um, the average tannery worker in India dies at 55. Okay, just to give you an idea of the kinds of uh, poisons in leather. So I would say leather. Avoid leather. Wool. Wool is highly toxic um, because of the pesticides that are used with sheep. Sheep are bred nowadays, uh, merino wool um, sheep are bred so heavily laden with wool that they can barely walk. They're just all wool. And they do that because they make more money per, she per, per, she per lamb, per sheep, I always forget, per sheep. And um, so they use a lot of pesticides with sheep. And there is no such thing, by the way, as responsible wool. That doesn't exist. That's another bit of greenwashing there. Thing. So those are two, those are two um, well, actually, I'll, I'll mention another one, down. Down is also highly, uh, um, hypo, you know, it's very allergic. 
Um, you can actually get an illness called feathered duvet lung. It exists. Swear to God, I didn't even know it existed before doing research. It's a respiratory illness that you get from down feathers that some people have such strong reactions to it, and it scars the inside of your lungs, and that's from down. Down also has lots of toxins, and it's also very, uh, you know, sensory-wise, it's not great with the feathers, this and that. And probably one of the most important spaces, I would say, to start is the bedroom, because it is where our body re repairs itself during the night. Sleep is so essential. And so I say if there's only one place you can start, start in your bedrooms, trying to make your bedroom as clean as possible, chemically free as possible. You're never gonna get 100%, that, that's, that's, that's hard. But as clean as possible, because sleep is so essential. And if you're wrapping yourself in wrinkle-free sheets, which please never buy because they're, they're, they're soaked in formaldehyde, that's why they, the wrinkles never come out. So if you wrap yourself in those things, you're not allowing your body to repair itself. So those yeah. are a couple tips. Yeah, the the and just to kind of talk a little bit more about sleep, the the brain kind of like a scrubber goes through your brain at night to clean everything. So I mean, the sleep and the quality of the sleep and what's happening while you sleep is is so important. Um, people are asking about mattresses. Is there a um, mattress that you love? Yes. Mattress brand. Yes, I am a lover of Naturepedic. Um, we have gone through so many different mattresses in our. Um, in our business because we, as we keep learning, we switch, we switch, we switch. There's other ones that are great too. Nest bedding's wonderful, but Naturepedic is, um, we actually interviewed the founder, Barry Chick, and he is just like a plethora of knowledge. I mean, he knows everything. And what's great about um, Naturepedic is they don't use memory foam. You know, nowadays you see all these commercials for memory foam. Memory foam is so toxic. Honestly, it gives me the worst vibe because of the smell. It's like, mm -hmm. a, a, I, I don't know if anyone else has noticed that, but I've always, Notice the smell that comes with that foam. Not a fan. What about avocado mattress? People are asking. Have you heard of that? Um, one? That's that's a good brand. I, um, it's a good brand. I haven't researched it well enough. I don't like to. I feel uncomfortable, okay. you know, mentioning brands unless I really know about them. Naturepedic, we know through and through, is a great company. Got it. And um, but you want to look for things that don't have memory foam, and latex. You only want to make sure you get organic latex. Don't get um, man-made latex because that's also lots of VOCs, volatile organic compounds, which are a class of chemicals. There's about 900 chemicals in VOCs. And um, memory foam has VOCs, paint has VOCs, a lot of products have VOCs. They admit a lot of what's called off-gassing. Same thing, so that- <laughs> You made your job a lot more hard, more difficult <laughs> by uh, switching into this lane. <laughs> it's right? been, you know what? Every day we're learning. I swear, I always say, I don't know every, every day we're learning. I just did a thing the other day, I was promoting antler decor. Because when I was in Wyoming, we had this whole thing. I went on uh, cross country with, the, with a guide and we saw elk and deer. And I said, Are, is antler decor ethical? He gave me this whole thing, how yeah, the shed hunters, they pick yeah. up the antlers, they shed them. And then um, we did a video the other day and we just looked up a little bit more information. I find out they're not ethical at all. So it's like we're constantly learning. Yeah, I thought that the antlers naturally fall out. Yeah, well. but what, yeah, so. Not the case. The <laughs> Got it, yeah. And, 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 and you know, in, ignorance is bliss, especially yes, is. In, in, in this field when not being ignorant. Um, and I don't really like that word ignorant. It sounds a little too too intense for me when when not knowing you know once you know and you know that like lives of humans or animals or like usually one of those is going to speak to is being impacted it's, it's hard to not see it differently um even since working for you like i i like a good you know designer bag or shoe um i can't do it i don't know if that'll stay forever but, you know but right now that just feels like i I might like it looks pretty. I can see the fashion and the art of a, you know, a cool bag or whatever, but can't spend my money on a leather good right now. Um, so I, I think, I, I think that I, I don't want to say anything too strongly, but I, I can't unsee it or unfeel it. Um, I say once you see the dark side, it's hard to go back. But you know what? It also, Lisa, think about it. It's for your health, putting everything aside. I mean, for my health, it's also great for my wallet. I mean, right, exactly. 
<laughs> I hate to tell you though, a lot of the big lines now have vegan bands, so you know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Stella McCartney always go, good to go for Stella. Anyway, um, so um, how are farm animals affected by unconscious home, home design shopping patterns? Well, I think it's you know kind of everything we've spoken about before. Um, you know, uh, look, every nickel you spend has power. And change only happens when consumers squeeze big corporations and they're forced to make change. I mean, you have now Ferrari, Mercedes, uh, Bentley, they're looking into vegan leathers for their cars. Oh, yeah, because I have a vegan because car. They're, yeah, because they're consumers in California who are, you know, more eco, um, eco environmentally aware are seeking mm -hmm. those products. But um, I think that it's just making, you know, think about when you purchase something Forgetting the vegan aspect, if you're not, if that's not your lifestyle, just think about, is this safe to bring into my space for myself, my family, my coworkers? So become your own expert, you know, and just education is power. I always say that education is power. You know, when, when, I, when I started this, again, I just did it because I love dogs, you know, and I had no idea that it was going to lead into so many different layers. Um, there is a certification that you've told me to look for on products. What is that called again? There's, there's a lot of certifications, but um, I'll just give you a couple. Okay. Look for GOTS, G-O-T-S, right? Mm -hmm. GOTS stands for the Global Organic Textile Standard. And again, not to sound, I don't want to sound like an infomercial, but if you subscribe to our newsletter, we send you great emails, very simple, but always giving you little tips because there's, a, and if you can get one takeaway a week, you're learning about how to create a healthier, happier environment for yourself. Mm -hmm. So you have GOTS, the Global Organic Textile Exchange. And a GOTS certified fabric or product has almost no toxins or chemicals in it. So it's a great, we always, that's the first thing we look for. That's like the, the number one thing we look for. Is it GOTS certified? It's not okay. Then we'll look for other certifications. We try to look for that. Look for fair trade certification. Fair trade certification means that the workers and the laborers are getting above average wages and they're in safe, ethical working conditions. So that's very important. So those are two certifications because there's a million of them, but I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are, those are really helpful. And what are some swaps to animal derived products that we can make? Okay. So for example, you could always do, if you have a leather and you really, really need, you want a leather, go with a faux leather, even though it still has chemicals, it's still less environment, has much less of an environmental impact than a real leather because real leather, um, it can take two years for one cow, two years of their life before they're slaughtered for their leather. So that, that, cat, that cow needed um, land to graze on. So forests were cleared. You have um, an acre a second globally is being, um, we're, we're losing forests, one acre a second for deforestation, right? For places for these animals to graze. Um, then we slaughter them and we use their byproducts. So it it's, doesn't even make sense when I say it, it's crazy. So it's more environmentally um, better than just using real leather. Um, of course, I'm a big proponent of organic cottons, linens, hemp, buckwheats, kapox. If you go with something like an organic cotton, yes, it's not going to last as long as a faux leather. However, the way I look at it is it will keep you healthier. <clears throat> so less doctor's appointments. <laughs> so I think it's kind of a, you know, so maybe that, that organic cotton slip cover or a sofa will only last a couple years as opposed to the faux leather couch that will last maybe nine or 10 years, but think about your health. But so those are the things, just organic, look for organic, look for the certifications. And if you're going to use um, a leather, use a faux leather because it is less environmentally, um, has much less of an environmental impact. And what about um, brands or retailers that we can trust? Are there any that um, are really operating at high ethical standards for either one or, or two of the, the intersects? So maybe they're not vegan, but they're sustainable. Maybe they're not sustainable, but they're vegan. 
Right, right. So understand that if something is, unfortunately, if it's animal-based, it's not sustainable. It's impossible for an animal-based product to be sustainable because think about it, that animal had to feed that animal. And cows produce, they're also, cows are one of the biggest pollutants in the world from the methane that they produce. They produce more um, pollution than cars. So anything that's animal-based is not sustainable. And when you see that, that greenwashing, I call where they tell you it's sustainable, it's not. So um, stick with, we love, again, Naturopedic. Um, we love Public Goods. It's a great company. For I love products. Public Goods. Love Public Goods. They're awesome. We love Dr. Bronner's. We use Dr. Bronner's a lot. But, um, but not, not like those types of products. Like, um, I want to buy a couch. Okay. So there's no, unless you're going to do, for example, we do custom sofas for very high-end clients, you know, completely, completely right. non-toxic, non-animal based. So that's one, that's one end. Okay. But if you want something affordable, there's not one company that, that okay. is, that meets all that criteria. You have to research. Um, we have a resource guide actually that lists companies. And what you want to look for are things that if, for example, if you get a full leather sofa and you are someone who has allergies and you don't even care about, again, the animal, the animal rights part. You want to get something that's, you, maybe you suffer from allergies, so you don't mm -hmm. want the smell, or your child has sensory issues, or you have sensory issues. So you want to go with a faux leather. Great. Now make sure under that faux leather sofa, they can say faux leather, but under it, there could be the foam of the, the cushion could be wrapped in down or feathers, which is very common because down is more expensive, but feathers are the underbelly of the duck, and that's very cheap. So a lot of companies use feathers to wrap foam uh, cushions in. So um, unfortunately, I can't give you like one company that I like for sofas or one company for chairs or, you know, it's or one company for headboards. Every company, you, you should be able to find something, but you just have to do a another layer of research because it's about health. You want it to be healthy, but especially when you're sleeping at night against a headboard, you don't want feathers in that headboard. That's a lot of toxins that your head is up against, kind of like the sheets or in the crib yeah. or in your child's bed. So you yeah, just, so, again, it's, it's, it's just about education. It's just what to, what to ask. Yeah, and uh, what I really like about what you've like encouraged me to think about too is bringing in nature. And like, I think sometimes we, we think, okay, well, everything needs to be like man-made in our home, but you know, you're a big fan of bringing in natural woods and bringing that element of life to it in, in a, in a different way. And I'm not doing, as of right now, we're not doing anything custom for my bedroom. So um, there are options without going custom that you've helped me kind of find and you know the benefit of working for you is you with you as you know what to look for in that subtext and that's kind of taken the weight off of my plate of figuring out okay well is this is this sustainable is this does this meet all the criteria that I want or not because you're there so for anybody who's kind of wondering what the design consultation process has been like Deborah and I have never met in real life we've done multiple zoom calls so far getting to know the first one wasn't even was just to getting to know Evan and I the second one was in the bedroom with my you know computer showing you around the space and the third or fourth you know was you coming back with all the um, ideas to kind of match who you think we are and it takes time right because I didn't just add to cart on Crate and Barrel and I just said that randomly I'm not speaking highly <laughs> or poorly of that brand but I didn't just add to cart, um, you know, and so we're seven months into our house and we're still sleeping on our mattress and, and box spring. But um, that's okay because we really want to make the right choices that and, and do the best we can to make choices that align with our current values. So the, the process, you, you work with a lot of people virtually, right? Yes, yes. Um, you know, we do. We work with quite a few people virtually, a lot, actually, especially now with COVID. And the process is really, I mean, typically it's for one room, it's one call. We give you a bunch of questions, send images. It's very organized. We're very efficient because a lot of people just want the room done now. 
And we work within all budgets. Most of the stuff that we do is extremely for affordable. Everything can be on, bought online because now especially, I think we're more busy with the virtual design services because everyone's scared, you know, and they're, they're scared to be spending a lot of money, but they're home and they need to redo their places or they want to paint a wall or they want to just get some furniture for their child's virtual learning space. Is, or they're having a baby, right? Like yeah, we do a lot a of baby. nursery work. Right, right. Well, we have the course coming out soon, which is very exciting. The yeah, can you tell course. us about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're um, creating a, a new course on um, safe and vegan um, nurseries and kids' rooms. So it's basically, uh, we have five great experts in the course, and we're just teaching you soup to nuts, how to design a completely, uh, or as completely as possible, non-toxic, healthy, positive sensory space for your baby or your child. And um, we show you how to measure room. The, the class project is a Pinterest board. I mean, we're, we're so in love with this course. I'm so in love with this course. <laughs> Too old to have another baby, but <laughs> <laughs> I would have one just for the course now. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, it's a really, really great course. And hopefully, we're hoping in about a month or so, it'll be ready. And it's, it's not going to be expensive. It's online. And it just teaches you everything. And it's done really simply. I always believe in doing things like making it as simple as possible for people. And so it's great. We talk about sheets and cribs and carpets and paint and lighting and all these things for kids and babies. So I love um, that. I mean, that's yeah. where the, you know, I think I mean, I grew up in a in a divorced home with lots of loud noises, and well, now <laughs> then they got divorced. But as a baby, there was a lot of loud noises and shock to my nervous system. Um, and I hope to have a baby one day and create not just a home emotional environment, but a room that is so soothing. I mean, I yes. think that there's so much to say about you know. I haven't been to a hotel in quite some time, but walking into a a hotel that just like has such a grounding vibe and not just the fact that it's vacation, but what elements provided that safety and how can we bring that into our everyday life um, for children and for adults. But I think just, you know, thinking about ha have it for your baby in that way, not thinking, oh, they won't remember this. Like they might not remember this, but the body holds the emotions and keeps the score and the environment in which they sleep matters and spend all their time, I think. Yeah, I mean, look, we're, we're many parts to a pie, of a pie, right? And our environment is one of them, you know? And we all want to be, I think it was um, Jack Wild, founder of Alibaba. He said, today, people want to be happy, healthy, and strong. You know, the, how we define luxury today, your generation, millennials, is very different than my parents' generation. You know, and we want to, def we define it by our experiences and how we feel in places. Mm. And that's really the new definition of luxury, which is why many high-end hotels now have meditation spaces and have a specific sense in the hotels. They never had that years ago. Right. So, the sense know, you, is a big one. When you, one. One little tip about a bedroom. You know, when you go into a hotel room and you're like, oh, this is amazing. It's the bedding is a lot of it. So if you're going to spend a little money on anything, Get great bedding. Get so white what do you mean sheets. by that? Do you mean lin sheets. linen? Get, yeah, linens. I always say white. I'm a big, big, big advocate of white sheets because white is clean. You get into bed at night and it's mm. clean. It's like, ah, it mentally, it psychologically mm -hmm. just cleanses you. When you think of a great hotel, you know, they always have that crisp white bedding. So getting white sheets and getting a comforter if you sleep with one, that's a little heavy because that presses on our nerve endings and it's Basically. like a massage. It's like a weighted blanket that, that children or adults with autism use all the time, shoulder pads. So it's like pressing on the nerve endings. And in a good hotel, you have those he that heavy bedding. So that's, that's something if you're going to start and you're like, you know what? I want to start to make a healthy um, space for myself. I'm going to get myself some sheets and pillowcases and a comforter that I like. And I'm so what? glad you said that because I think that would have been a great question for me to ask. What's the first yeah. step anyone can make? And I think it's also an affordable step in the sense that yes. it's not a piece of furniture that, you know, is running you hundreds of dollars. I mean, maybe, I don't know how much sheets if you're doing the whole thing cost, but I think that's a great place to stop. And there's a brand that you always recommend. What do, what do you like again? We love Bowling Branch. You love Bowling Branch. Branch. We love Bowling Branch. I have a parachute. 
Yeah, parachute's great too. As a, try to look for something that's got certified. You can find got certified sheets. Also, another, another thing, be careful with printed sheets, printed crib sheets, printed regular sheets. A lot of printed sheets, um, the dyes are extremely toxic. So when, you, you know, for a baby in the nursery, the cute little uh, printed sheets with monkeys and this and that, those sheets, most likely, if they're not got certified, are extremely toxic. So be careful with that. And what this is going to mean for a lot of us, if you are serious, and what I expect it's going to mean for my future, is, you know, I grew up in the generation of Forever 21 and, you know, get a quick outfit, a cheap outfit, wear it once, twice, whatever, don't worry about it. I don't expect my generation and my kids' generation to have as much stuff because you're going to be investing in the right pieces. So if I have, you know, I'd rather have one or two great sets of sheets than millions of sheets or then go on Amazon and just add to cart because, oh, it's, you know, $3, great deal. Right. I found it on Amazon. Like a great deal oftentimes. I hate to say it because I really love finding, you know, I was a big Forever 21 shopper in my youth, um, embarrassed to say, but um, it comes at a cost that you don't see. And once you see it, you can't unsee it, whether that's the chemical or the cruelty of an animal or the cruelty of a human being that was put through to make it. Um, and maybe it's just age and getting older and caring, or maybe, I don't know, but it's, I'd rather it's have awareness. I think it's awareness. I mean, I, I still have in my closet a winter coat, a great, gorgeous black coat, and the sleeves are horsehair. You know, so it's like. So will you wear that? Just curious. I can't wear it anymore. I just can't, can't wear it. It bothers me. It bothers but me. But it's in the closet. And what I did uh, last year when I was in New York was I donated a bunch of coats to the homeless. So that was something that, okay, I'm not going to wear it, but we're not going to throw it out. And there are people that are freezing to death in New York. So that's what I did. You know, it's, if you donate it to a good cause, just don't throw things out. It's not good to throw them out, but yeah, we've changed. I mean, when I was in my twenties, I had a fur coat, you know, I thought I was the bomb, you know, <laughs> you know I was like, I, I look back, I'm like, who was this person? You know, was like, who was this person? You know? like, I have it? a vegan coat from and it was um, affordable in the sense, I mean, if you go to Bloomingdale's like in the winter and try and get a coat, you're starting at like 600 to $800. I have a coat, I think it was a hundred or $200 and I've worn it for the past two years from the brand Noise and I love it. I don't, I need to go back and look now if it's got certified, um, but I know that it is, it is vegan and kept me warm. Right, there's another certification if you can't find God certified because God's is really, that's, the granddaddy of That's certifications. The highest, yeah. It. It's called Okatech certification. E O oh God, I always screw this up. It has the weirdest spelling. E O the weird word. E O X. Okay. Wait, let me write it down. E O X Okatex. E O X E T E X. Something like that. Okatech. Okanobi. Okatex. It's a weird name. E O X E T. I think I'm screwing it up. But that's a good certification also. And it's it's not as strict as GOTS, but it's better than no certification. For sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, we don't want to take any more of your time. Um, I think, I think that those are my questions for you. How can people find you? I guess on, on – oh, somebody just yeah. got the certification. Thank you. Right. Um, so if you go to our Instagram, Deborah Demary Instagram account, which mm -hmm. now, uh, you know what, now we'll have more followers because the account was hacked. We had to start over. So everybody <laughs> just make sure you're following the right one because your other one is still active. You were hacked. I know. I know. I was hacked by Russians. I was yeah. hacked by Russians. They actually even showed me the address in Moscow where it was hacked. Um, so <laughs> yes, so it's, um, it's terrible. Right? Um, so how do we make sure it's the right Instagram? It's, um, um, I think it's listed here. So you can just yeah. tap your name and I'll yeah. put it on my story again today and I'll tag it correctly in yeah. when I save this to the feed. So follow the right Deborah Demare. And then follow, follow the right Deborah Demare. And also if you go on our, our, our bio, you can um, subscribe to the newsletter and that's a really good way just to keep in touch. And, all the things that are going and on. I think that's what it's about. It's about slow learning, not 
jumping all the way in and throwing out everything in your house and starting over. Yeah. It's about slow learning if you're serious. Like I said, you know, I think that that's, that's sustainable, whether it's dietary changes or not. Um, and really listening to your intuition around things. So, you know, I never made the decision and I still haven't to, you know, not buy designer leather bags and shoes or whatever. But when I walk into the store and I'm like, you know, where I used to be like, oh my gosh, love this art, fashion, you know, and I'm just like, yes, it's pretty, but I can't spend my dollar on it. It's not from a, similar to like a lot of the dietary stuff, if you become an ethical vegan, like it doesn't come from willpower anymore. Like, oh, I can't resist this. It's like, there's a signal that's going off in your body that just says, not right. And if it's a much more um, sustainable place to make decisions from than just you know, going cold turkey and making it your identity. Yeah, you know, like you said, you have to be ready and no one can force you to do these things. And again, it's just, you know, dipping your toe and little changes. And just think about your health. If you're trying to, look, you're, you're, you promote a healthy um, mind and body. So your environment is very important too. I, so. more, than, more than even that type of health that you might think of as a registered dietitian, I... I want to create a compassionate mind. I, the more self-compassion work I do, um, this kind of works both ways, the more compassionate I am to others. The more compassionate I am to others, other beings, whether that's an ant on the floor, like a mosquito's flying around right now, like, I'm, like I would like it to leave my house, but I'm going to try not to swat it, you know? The right. more I'm compassionate, but if I, if I recognize that that's a life, all of a sudden, everybody's a life. And especially in the world of it's so easy to other people and hate and judge to build our own ego when that's a bad place to find fuel from. We need to recognize that everybody, like you said in the beginning, is on their own journey. And it's only, you know, judging them doesn't make us a better human being. It just makes us more judgmental and a darker vibe. So yeah. it's about a, 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 comp a compassionate mind is a healthy mind. A compassionate body is a healthy body to me because that changes all the chemicals and all, all the things that you might not consider when going on your health journey. It's not just about what you eat and what you wear. It's about the, your nervous system state. That's right. Very well said. Very well said. Sort of. It was actually a very lengthy sentence, but hopefully yeah. it was clear. <laughs> It was good, though. I liked it. Lisa, this was so <laughs> um, much fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I will save this to my feed. Hopefully all goes well. And thanks so much for being you. Everybody go check out Deborah. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you.